everybody, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about Guinevere. She is on a banner right now. She's got an event dungeon going on right now. And I reckon a lot of you are probably kind of curious about how good she is and whether or not she's worth going for. So I figured I would show her off. I pulled her pretty early in the game, pretty early in the account. So I've had some experience using her and figuring out what kind of stuff she's good at and what kind of stuff... Uh, really, there's nothing she's not good at. I can, I can put her on pretty much any team and she contributes to the success of the team. So... Uh, she's a really cool champ, and there's a couple of things, one thing in particular, that I want to show you that I think will motivate you to build her over anything else that I'm going to talk about in the video. So let's very quickly go through her skills and stuff and talk about how she's geared, and then we'll, we'll take a look at her in action, and I'll talk about how I use her from time to time. So on her skills, we've got the Romantic Reversal, right? So at the beginning of the battle, before you skill this up, I think it's 20 turns, she puts Romantic Reversal on all allies, and then she gains Tragic Ending, which is when she gets hit, she reduces Romantic Reversal on everyone else. So skilling her up, we've got it to 50 turns, so now it'll last a little bit longer, right? Every time she gets hit, if you don't ever skilled up, if she gets hit twice, it's pretty much gone because your team will also have gotten turns and ticked that down a little bit. So pretty much when she gets hit twice, it's gone, whereas now it's up for longer. It's up for quite a few more turns. So um, that's that's pretty handy. And this matters because it puts abnormal status immunity on everybody at the beginning of the fight, as well as does a couple of other things, right? If you're leaning into a co-op attack damage team or, uh, or, or you just need some damage mitigation, damage taken minus 12% is pretty substantial. That's a pretty substantial reduction in damage for the beginning of the fight. So um, pretty, pretty solid skill there. Here, when she gets hit, if her HP is under 30%, 30% or lower, I should say. She puts a shield on all allies except herself, and then she turns invincible for a turn. Here, we've got a shield on herself at the beginning of the battle worth 100% of her HP, as well as effect resistance. So she's really good at, like, setting you up at the beginning of the fight for success, right? A lot of damage mitigation at the beginning of the fight. Lots of cool stuff going on. Good shielding. So we know we're going to want to focus on her HP the best we can. Uh, let's take a look at her relic real quick. Here we've got a three hitter on the A1 with damage dealt decrease, so more damage mitigation built in, and a three hitter, which makes her pretty useful in pin bead. We've got a two hitter here that puts shield on herself and all allies. So again, the higher we stack her HP, the better off you're gonna be. It's got a pretty good multiplier, but you won't really be stacking attack on her, so it doesn't matter. You're really gonna wanna try to get some HP on her. But again, just more protection there. And then here we have a skill that we have to charge, and it hits five times at random. 85% of attack, 285% of defense, with the last two hits having a chance to put damage dealt decrease for two turns. Uh, I'm sorry, one turn. Again, like solid multipliers, and I guess if you wanted to lean into it and see what kind of damage it could do, you could give it a shot. I don't tend to use this skill much. I, I'm much more interested in the, in the protection she's offering than what she's doing here. So I tend to let her either A1 or A2 and A1 in a fight. She's got the Ice and Fire Relic too that are available in the shop. I'll probably do another video where I go look at those a little bit more in depth and see which one we think would be the one to go for first. But I think her win relic is, is perfectly fine right now. So um, as far as the gear on her, I've got, I've only get, got one life set on her. I would really like to get two life sets on her. I just don't know if I can swing it. I guess I could see if I've got, I really don't want to put her in four star gear if I can help it. I guess we could get her in another live set though. Let's do that real quick, actually. Um, Cause I don't care. That's a broken piece. And then I don't, well, then I lose the defense set. We'll leave her like this for now. This is fine. The more life sets, the better, the more HP, the better. So here we've got HP percentage, HP percentage, HP percentage across the board. I think that's a fairly reasonable way to go. And then over here, just if you can get HP percentage substats, that's great. Like that, that that's that's sort of a best case scenario type of thing. Uh, of course, defense stacking on her as well is not going to be a bad idea. Effect resistance and stuff like that a little bit later. But earlier on, just try to get life sets on her and try to get HP percentage here if you can. If you can't, just get flat HP. All right, for your main stat. If you need help with gearing, if you if you need to understand gearing a little bit better in the game, I have done a full guide that breaks down gearing. I'll try to remember to card to it up there, or it'll be linked below if you if you need to go check that out. But as a quick peek into her gear, especially in the early game, the more life sets, the better. 
and try to have HP percentage as the main stat on these three, and then HP percentage as a substat if you're at the point where you can hunt substats like that uh, on on the on the left side. Okay, pretty easy build. Not not a lot required. I reckon you could go attack speed here if you felt like you wanted to, but I don't see any reason not to just stack HP on her across the board. So. As I said, you can take her pretty much anywhere in the game. You can put her on just about any team and she's going to contribute. Now, she might not always be the best in slot option, but early in the game, if you're fairly limited in who you have built and what you have available to you and you need a little bit of that extra support, she can definitely do it for you. So, like, let's jump into like a lower stage of pin feed real quick and I'll just show you a quick run. Excuse me, I don't know what's going on. I guess I'm about, about to internally combust. Uh, because I hit record. Uh, we, we can bring her into Pinveed. Now, I usually run Tristan in this spot, but I got, you can also run her in this spot, so we're going to showcase that. I know a lot of people don't like Tristan the way I like Tristan, so uh, let's let's jump into one fight real quick and take a look at, at what she's doing for us. And if I have to click start one more time, I'll scream. So we can come up into the skill order settings, and... You could go two ways here with her. I do not recommend using her A3. I don't I don't think you need to bother with her A3 in here. I don't bother with her A3 in most places I take her. If you have the support, if your healer is healing enough and your champs can take the hits well enough, you can just have Guinevere use her A1. That way she's going to be chipping away the shield when it's up. She's going to be putting damage dealt decrease up so that your team is taking even less damage. And she's also charging vigor for the rest of your team. If you need a little bit of the extra help, then you can prioritize her A2 followed by her A1 so that she'll also she'll do a two hitter so it'll help a little bit with the shield but then it also puts shield on your allies which again makes it a little bit easier to sustain it makes it a little easier on your healer to keep up and makes it easier on everybody else to take the hits so we're in a situation where we can justify just using her A1 and uh, and this is what it'll look like okay again she put the romantic reversal up on everybody at the beginning of the fight so you see they've got tons of stacks of that which means they're taking less damage. They're doing more co-op dam damage if we're if we're doing co-op damage, and they have a normal abnormal status immunity. So there's not going to be any stuns or uh, brain brainwashing or confusion or fear or any of that type of stuff. Okay. So this is going to go pretty quick because we're a little bit deeper into the dungeon, but it would it would essentially work the same way as you scale up with it. Yeah, and and again, she's she's going to be effective in there at. at contributing to the success of the team. Is she the best option for it? Perhaps not, but depending on what your account looks like and who you've built and what kind of gear you've got, she can definitely make it a little bit easier to, to work your way through this dungeon, okay? As far as what other stuff, there, here's the thing that I think is probably the most important thing to show off as it pertains to her. If we come to, yeah, normal 10-7. If you have not hit this boss yet, you are in for it. This boss is tough, dude. It, it is such a ramp up from 10 6. The, the difficulty spike from 10 6 to 10 7 is astronomical. It is, it is very, very hard. And the reason that this fight is so hard, we'll just jump in very quickly to show you, is at the beginning of the fight, he's going to eat three of your team. And depending on which three he eats, it's going to make your life very hard. You're going to have to probably back out and come back in several times to try to get the right start to the fight. Because if you get a bad start, it's very hard to recover. He does big damage. He puts dots on you. Then he does dot explosion. Then he continues to hit hard. Then he starts putting up fears and all this other. It's, it's a very tough fight. So you kind of need a good start for it. So it, it's a big headache on top of being very difficult. The mechanics of it are also very difficult. Like, it's difficult because the stat scale is high, so you have to do a lot of damage and you have to have a lot of sustainability to survive it, but also mechanically, it's just a tough fight, okay? If you have Guinevere, however, let's bring her into this fight. Let's, let's watch how this one starts. Hey, <laughs> he didn't need anybody. Because we have abnormal status immunity because of her passive. Now, sometimes she gets eaten. Sometimes he manages to eat her too. But everybody else is safe. So you get a much different start to this fight. It's, it's, a, it's basically a completely different stage. 
if you have her on the team and she keeps everybody else from getting eaten because you can manage without her, right? Even if that's all she's here for, when she comes back, sure, she can A2 and put up shields and she can A1 and put up damage dealt decrease and like that stuff will be helpful, but you don't need her at the beginning. If you've got your healer and your other two damage dealers or whatever combination you're bringing in, uh, it's it's just so much easier to manage this fight, okay? And then the round two is kind of a similar thing because it's going to start over, you know what I mean? So all of the all of the annoying parts of the second phase of this fight don't really apply at the beginning of the fight either. So it's just really handy. She is incredibly useful for this stage. And then not only this stage, but when you get to it, in the restricted area, if we come over to the sealed temple, that boss at, at, in the campaign, that 10-7 boss, is this dungeon. So... It's and it scales up much higher than the campaign, so it's very difficult. This is a very, very difficult dungeon. If you have Guinevere, however, it's just a different experience, right? It's just a to it becomes a totally different fight. So you're going to be able to have a lot more success in here. So she is well worth going after, and well worth building. Now again, worth going after over Merlin? I don't know. I don't. I don't have any experience with Merlin. I know everyone in my Discord that talks about Merlin. Everyone that's solving problems quickly has Merlin. So Merlin also seems to be very good, but I don't have any experience with him. I can't speak to how good he is, but I can speak to how good Guinevere is. And again, if for no other reason than the 10-7 boss and the dungeon and the sealed temple, uh, she is well worth going after and building because she just a, a completely changes the way that fight works. And uh, again, on top of that, you can pretty much slot her into anywhere. When I built her, I started making a lot of campaign progress. She was on my campaign team for quite a while. She can also be very good as you try to push the Forbidden Dungeon because, again, she just offers a lot of protection. And there's a couple of stages in the Forbidden Dungeon, for example, where uh, there's a guy that puts up Brainwash and you can't get rid of it once it goes up. It's like, which maybe that one can't even be blocked. Maybe that one's just supposed to be a huge pain in the ass. I don't remember. But in theory, either way, <laughs> you get what I'm saying. She she definitely makes certain things in this game approachable in a completely different manner. So I think she's pretty good. I think she's really good. I'll continue to invest in her, develop her more. We'll get better gear on her. I got to work on getting some purple stars on her, getting her relics leveled up. And then we, we, we need to come in at some point and take a look at her other relics since they're available in the shop right now and see if we think any of them are... Uh, I mean, I'll probably grab them both if we're going to be real about it. I'm going to try to farm that dungeon really aggressively and get as much as I can from it while it's up. So we'll probably do a follow-up on her on her relics. But anyway, that's it. I hope this helps you decide whether or not you want to pull for her on the banner. And if you already have her, decide if you want to invest in her. I think she's well worth it. I don't think you would regret investing in her at all. And again, one of the cool things about this game is that if you do, it's it's pretty generous with reset tokens. So, you know... Worst case scenario, you build her and don't like her and have to reset her, but I don't anticipate that would happen. I think she's a chance that you'd build and be pretty happy with, with what she's doing for you and, and probably continue to invest in her. So that's it. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you next time.